So usually, when you go for the elections for the first time, uh, you'll get a code from the election officers sitting there. They'll ask you for your voter ID, uh, and then you log on to the system. When you log on to the system, you'll get a list which basically displays all the different candidates and parties in testing. So on one column, you have all the independent candidates listed and with their names. Then you'll have, for each political party listed, you'll have a party with each candidate or for each party listed up. And finally, the most important option, in a way, is the idea that you have an option for none of the above, which is here. So now, as any voter, you can make an informed choice in who you choose to vote for. So if you choose to vote for an independent candidate, you can select any one of the independent candidates. You can't select more than one in that case. Uh, next is the idea that you can vote for a party. Now, when you vote for a party, there are two ways that you can do so. You can vote for every single member in the party together. Like you can just click the top section and you basically that selects every member in the party itself. And that's like registering a vote for every member of the party. But suppose you want to vote for only particular members of a party, not everyone. In that case, you can select, like from within one party, you can select the few people that you wanted to vote for. Like for instance, if I wanted to vote for uh, candidate 1, 3 and 4 from party 2, I would select these three options. Now, one thing to note is that you can only select uh, candidates from one party you can't select different candidates from di different parties at the same time. So that's the important process. Uh, finally, the whole, uh, also if you want to, like if you're not satisfied, you just choose the nota option, that's a single click there, and then you cast your vote. So we're using a hypothetical election here. In this case, we had two independent candidates and two parties. Uh, so we're assuming in this case, just for simplicity, that there are 100 students who cast their vote, that's the total population and this is for 7 seats in this hypothetical house. Alright, so uh, now like after all the voting is done, the results are in and this is how the result screen would ideally look. So you have 4 votes put aside for nota and in candidate 1 has gotten 14 votes, candidate 2 7 votes, party 1 has gotten 45 votes overall with different votes for each member. Party 2 has 30 votes overall with, again, different votes for each member. Now the first step in this process is to calculate something called the electoral quotient or the EQ. So the EQ is quite straightforward. It's basically the total number of uh, people on campus, which is in this case 100, divided by the number of seats in this house, which in this case is 7. So this is approximately about 14 point something. So how this works is, so in order to get a seat in this house, you need to have at least 14 votes. So going by this logic, uh, party 2, because it's 14 and 14 2 is 28, has now gotten at least 2 seats in this house. Party 1 has potentially gotten 3 seats in this house already. And independent candidate 1 is already in the house because 14 votes. So now, like the first person in the house is candidate 1 who is independent who has 14 votes they clear the cutoff now with regard to party 1 they've gotten 3 people in the house now how do you determine which 3 people get in so that's where the, you look at the total number of votes received so in this case uh, you have candidate 3 who's gotten 42 votes is the first person from party 1 who makes it to the house next in line is candidate 1 with 40 votes so this is one, this is two, and finally candidate two, who's gotten 21 votes, is in with is the third person in. So that's the three people for party one who are in. There's one independent candidate already in. So four people are in. And party two has gotten two seats. So in this case, who are these two people? The first one is candidate four, who's gotten 29 seats, and then a 29 votes, and then the next one is candidate one, who's gotten 25. So now as at the end of the first round with the EQ set at 14, we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 people. 6 out of the required 7 are done, like are now in the house. The next step in this process is the EQ now drops to the next lower integer, which is 13. Now, with 13, we redo these calculations. Uh, party 1 will still have 3 seats because 
13 threes are 39. Party two also still gets two seats. So that's it. There's no independent candidate. So 13 is not sufficient. It drops to the next value. In this case, it's 12. Now we redo this step again. We check at each step for 12. Now with 12, it stays at three itself because 40, it, it's not enough. And party two will now go, will still stay at two because that's not enough. So it again drops one more level to 11. Now with 11 seats, party one's total increases by one. It goes up to four because 11 fours are 44. Uh, party two stays the same. There's no change in the independent voting. So now the next person in line who's gotten the next number of votes gets it, which in case is candidate four with seven votes. So this is the fourth person. And now we have the seven people chosen into the house. So in order, it would essentially be the independent candidate one, party, party one, candidate three, candidate one, candidate two, then party two, uh, candidate four and candidate one and finally candidate four of party one. Essentially you calculate the EQ and you keep dividing the total votes each party has gotten and each independent has gotten and you keep ch checking until you get the total number of seats required. So there's one uh, more eventuality which can potentially occur and that happens when different candidates in the same party get the same number of votes. So going back to our original example, so as per the electoral quotient which we calculated, which comes out to 14 point something, party one would get three seats initially. So now, if we had to pick which three people get the seats, so the first person in would be the, with, with the highest number of votes, candidate three. The second person would be candidate one with 14 votes. Now comes the fun part. Like, now you have two people with the same number of votes and you need to pick one person to get in. Now what happens is, is the order, the list, the ordering in which the list is made kicks in. So with candidate two and candidate four, both have 21 votes. But since candidate two is higher up on the list, candidate two is the first one to get in. This is why uh, the list order, which is determined by each party when fielding candidates is quite important. And that plays a very important role in case of tiebreaks.